Patients entering healthcare settings such as GP practices, hospital clinics and primary care centres can have a range of diverse needs. They may need adjustments to be made because they are blind or visually impaired or deaf. They may use wheelchairs or have other physical or mental issues. Some patients have learning disabilities or have sexual orientation issues or transgender issues. They may be military veterans with healthcare needs or they may be a carer with related issues. Whatever the patient's diverse needs, we know that when such patients experience positive awareness of diversity, they want to regularly attend healthcare appointments. And NHS organisations report improved patient experiences through more positive feedback. So with these outcomes in mind, we want to make sure our healthcare services are confident in dealing with these types of individual patients' needs when we make appointments for them and when we meet them. That's why we are putting together this inclusive patient journey. Inclusive Patient Journey, made by volunteer patient rep members from T&G Consumer Advisory Panel, working with T&G CCGs. My name is Harry and I am a stroke patient. I had a stroke in 2005. I tried to be independent by going on holiday with my wife and friends who are very supportive. However, I need support when I'm out and about in the community. I sometimes have to attend the local primary care trust where the receptionist may not be aware of my particular need. And when I phone for an appointment, I would wish they would ask me, do I have any special needs? I, if I need to bring a carer, I can, but as I try to be independent, I prefer to come on my own. Like the staff have a habit of pointing that my appointment is when I get this over there, which is no good to me because my eyes are very bad. If they ask me what I need, I would request a hoist as it is a very important mobility item for me because without it, I cannot do anything. I cannot transfer, I cannot get examined and basically I can't go out of my chair to go into a bed without it. If this was asked before my appointment, it would make things a lot easier. I have a lot of time for receptionists. I think they do a good job, but this, I think you could go to an extra yard and help vulnerable people by asking if anybody has any special requirements before they get to the hospital. This, we, this they can make reasonable adjustments, which is, all I ask for is reasonable adjustments so they are more flexible to help separate groups. My name's Heather and I use a GP surgery locally and for me it's important um, that when I access the service I know that it's going to be inclusive for lesbian, gay and bisexual people. So for example, there could be information on Pride in Practice which is a benchmarking tool developed by the Lesbian and Gay Foundation to for surgeries to make sure that they are inclusive of their lesbian, gay and bisexual patients. GP surgeries that sign up to this would make sure that they're creating an inclusive environment. So for example, they use terms like partner rather than husband, wife or boyfriend, girlfriend and they've got information clear displayed on lesbian, gay, and bisexual um, specific services available locally. They would also make sure that all staff had been trained on issues related to sexual orientation and that the, the GPs and the nurses were aware of um, health promotion that might want to target specifically at patients who are lesbian, gay or bisexual. 
when I'm accessing a GP service, if I'm asked about my sexual orientation on a demographic monitoring form, alongside other things like gender and ethnicity, I know that that service is taking into account my needs as a lesbian, gay or bisexual person, and that they're able to give me targeted information and an inclusive service. So sexual orientation isn't what defines me as a patient, but it is something that has an impact on my health outcomes and my health chances. For example, as a, as a bisexual woman, I want to know that my clinicians are aware that lesbian and bisexual women need cervical screening as much as heterosexual women, and that they are aware of um, offering me screening and aware of my circumstances there. So again, the lesbian, gay and bisexual um, community has done some work with the NHS to promote cervical screening among that community and among service providers as well. Hi, my name's Beth Seymour. I'm a trans woman who's in her 50s. Um, I transitioned about seven years ago and um, so far, touch wood, I've not come across any problems with services. But I do have problems at the moment in terms of what I need from those services. For example, I am a trans woman, therefore I need to have my breasts examined every three years because I'm over 50. Uh, but also, I have a prostate. I still have my prostate and therefore I should be given the opportunity to go in for an examination because my mother suffered from breast cancer and my father had prostate cancer. So you can see my dilemma here that I need to access single sex services. I think the positive way to look at this is, is that we need to look at the basics. What are the basics? Pronouns, very basic. How do we get around that? Training, to show that um, if you do make a mistake, you can always apologize and th that would be more acceptable than just shutting up. Quite, quite simply, uh, take the person at their word because they are the person they are. They won't be anybody else. Um, why would they be? Yeah, we represent people for a term side, which is a user -like organisation for uh, people, well, adults for, uh, with learning disabilities. <laughs> Hospitals and doctors, what about and them? Then, uh, yeah, but what about them? What do they do? Oh, what don't they do? Yeah, uh, they talk to me. Yeah, uh, uh, and not to you. And how does that make you feel? And, uh, angry. Uh, uh, angry and frustrated. And uh, then. Uh, they so you don't understand what they're saying, so they talk to me. Because they think I will understand. So I think, what, I think what needs to happen there then is you know, for people to change their attitudes almost, you know, change the way they talk so people with disabilities can understand and then, uh, what's the word, you know, and then obviously you know, people like Sam and anybody else in Sam's position can you know, be more involved. I didn't, I didn't you know, just treat everyone as equals and individuals. To sum up, the aim of this Tameside and Glossop patient voice DVD of an inclusive patient journey is to remind people about the positives to be gained by all when frontline healthcare services go the extra mile to understand individual differences when providing access to healthcare information, services and premises, and from services being confident in dealing with people from each of the local protected characteristics groups, and when commissioners involve local protected group patient reps in both helping to shape NHS services and in scrutinising changes for any adverse impacts with recommendations to be made to key decision makers in healthcare. Thank you. Funded by NHS Tameside and Glossop Clinical Commissioning Group. 
made by volunteer patient rep members from T&G Consumer Advisory Panel working with T&G CCGs. Delivered by Donkey Storm Films.